Hello again guys. Today we're going to start going through some American wooden ammo boxes from the Second World War. I've got a selection of different types and instead of doing this in one big video I've decided to break it down into separate videos for each of the different types so that it doesn't take 15 to 20 minutes to go through the whole lot and you can have a better look at each one. So we'll do that as a little series that I'll add to the equipment overviews playlist. Right, so let's get ahead with the first type of box, which I have in front of me here. Right, so the first type of box we're going to go through here is a sort of generic ammunition box that the Americans used in the Second World War. They used these for lots of different types of ammunition. They all seem to be the same box, just marked up differently from what I can tell. Though wartime examples of them are not overly common with all of their components intact. They're normally missing lids or the inside liner has been removed. So details are a little bit sketchy and I wasn't able to find out any really specific little details on the internet I'm afraid. So my boxes are reproductions and uh, I'll go with the, through, over them with you now, uh, get the camera down and show you them up close. Right then guys here we are, obviously I'm going to have to cut my head off for this because I just do not have room to get everything in the frame. So what you basically have here is a generic wooden box, it has a lid on top which is held down by six bolts with wing nuts on. If I pivot forward you can see them a little bit better. So how this would work is that you'd undo the wing nuts and you'd simply lift the lid off and dispose of it. That is probably why most of the wartime examples these I've seen are missing their lids because they were just got rid of, they are probably just used as firewood etc and lost over time. Now this reproduction one has been made to look exactly the same on the top with the wing nuts but it's actually a hinged box. So the man who builds these he hides the hinges on the inside, as you can see there. So the, as a reenactor, you can actually use them as a practical box on displays. I've lined the inside of mine just so it doesn't bang and scratch everything up quite as bad. But these are very useful on the displays. Right, so as you can see there's got a number of markings on the crate. You have the type of ammunition that's being held in it, in this case 50 calibre. You have the amount of ammunition in it. You often see them marked how they're stored, usually in cartons, or which are basically little cardboard boxes. You have a packing number on them, and you can also spin it around on the side. It's a bit hard to see against the red, but you see you have the ordnance symbol here, and all of the relevant details on the side as well, which is copied on both sides. The back of it is plain, except for the red stripe. Now, from what I can tell, the uh, red stripe is different for the different types of ammunition. You, I've seen these same boxes for 30 cal, 30 cal carbine, 50 cal and 45 ACP and they all have different markings on them in terms of the stripes. You also see these crates in very dark stained wood which then have a different style of markings on them again. I've seen them with, uh, in yellow markings with the stripes or with a belt of ammunition painted on the front so you can see what they are. So they come in a lot of different styles and unfortunately I've been unable to find any information on the internet about the specifics of these markings or if there's any particular branch to branch difference between them. I just know from finding more time or seeing more time examples that there is a hell of a lot of variation in it. Right, so here's one of my other crates. You see it's the same type, but this one is marked up for 30 caliber ammunition. So you can see it has the same sort of markings as the 50 caliber ones, but it, you can know, obviously it holds at one and a half thousand rounds instead of 350. But more to the point, you can see the different markings. This one just has the single uh, vertical stripe on it, which runs across the front and the back. And then on the side, you have the red markings here, which again have the information about the type of ammunition in it and the quantity. And you can see on this one, the ordnance flame and bomb symbol much clearer because it's not on the red background. But apart from that, this is essentially the same crate with the same wing nuts. Obviously the reproduction one has the same fold and lids. So that's just an example of how the markings on the crates varied. In the future, maybe I'll be able to get hold of some for the 30 carbine and 45 ACP ammunition and then you'll be able to see different versions of them again on the marking side. So that's the basics of these crates covered quickly. Unfortunately the reproduction ones don't have the liners. 
from what I've seen of photos or originals and a couple that I've seen for sale online, they should have a metal liner go the whole way around the inside here, which I assume is something to do with stopping the, the ammunition being corroded or just general protection. I'm not sure of the exact. So again, on the internet, I've been able to find basically no specific information about these. So if any of you do have any website links, I'd be happy to look through them because I'm always wanting to learn more information about the little bits of equipment. So now that we've uh, gone through the basics of these boxes, I'm just going to go through a couple of ways that I use them and ideas for how you can use them if you have any and you want to use them on your displays or as part of your living history. Right guys, there's a few different ways that I like to use these crates and boxes personally. Now, you couldn't do this necessarily with original ones because they're not so utilitarian as they don't have the opening and shutting lids. I don't think if I had an original I'd want to be constantly removing the lid if I was lucky enough to even have one that did have the lid. But basically a few ideas of what you can do with these and what I've done with these is on my Jeep I tend to have one strapped to the side of it at the back in a way where it's secure but you can still open and shut the lid. It's normally the 30 cal box I use for that one as my Jeep normally has 30 cal mounted into its gun pedestal and that will just allow you to have easy access to things that you need, big bottles of water, food, you can have your camera in there, anything that needs to be hidden excuse me, and that will essentially act like a trunk that will look period correct for you. So I find that as the most useful way to use these. Uh, another thing I do is when transporting stuff to and from events, I actually put a few, or worse, two 50 caliber ammo tins in each box to save space. Uh, they can't hold much in that way as when they're being used in reality they'd only be having just rounds on their own in cartons as opposed to rounds in tins in the box so they aren't very good for holding tins but if you just need a food transport they're good for that on displays they look pretty good stacked up if you've got a few of them you can make a little ammo dump if you have a trailer you can have the trailer with the canvas top off so and have that filled with ammo crates and tins that looks pretty smart I'll include some photos here whilst I'm rambling on of different uh, pictures of mine at shows to see examples of that. And what I find personally I, these are really nice for on displays is to put into the ammo cart, the little M3A4 ammo cart that I have. They can just be moved about then, you can do bits and pieces with them, you can use it again to hide stuff in the same way as you do when I have it on my vehicle. So they're very good as displays, they are however quite expensive. Uh, my ones come from a man who runs a business known as World War II Boxers in the UK. His stuff is all clones from originals that he's got, so uh, you know they're pretty accurate. However, they are quite expensive. But if you're in the UK and you need some of these, then that is probably the best quality example to get. Just prepared, be prepared to uh, spend a fair amount of money on each box. So that's the end of the brief overview of these boxes for the first video in this little series. I'll add the other ones I've got over time, I'll just pop them in sporadically so that uh, you get a bit of variation in content and I'll uh, add photos of each type as I do it from events that I've been to so you can see examples of all of them in use. But uh, I'm sorry I don't have any of the really nerdy specific little details about these, I just haven't been able to find a lot about them on the internet. But again, if anybody watching this video sees any of that or knows of a link to any websites that has that sort of information, please do send it over to me. So as usual, thanks for watching the video. If you have any comments, please hear down below. I'm always happy to chat to everyone. And if you have any ideas for future videos, please share them with me as well and I'll see what I can do for you. At the minute, because the weather is starting to turn here and the season is over basically for the year, I am a bit limited in what I can do. So over the time being, I'll probably just be doing a lot of overviews like this or demonstrations or how-to guides. If there's any tips and tricks, any things like that of a particular subject you want to do, then let me know and I'll do my best to I'll try and answer it for you in a, in a semi-competent ma manner. So uh, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.